What's up, fishing friends and family? I'm Zieg, and this is part two of making this lure. If you haven't seen part one yet, I recommend you do that. If you're like me, you, you probably won't. Here's a couple of quick scenes from the first video to catch you up. My larger wooden, surprisingly hard, 44 caliber lead balls. I just kind of go crazy. That took a lot to get that off. I wound up having to kind of hit it with a, a wooden mallet for a while. Wipe off any squeeze out. It's mesmerizing. Back from the bathtub. No action. I didn't know what I'm doing on this lure from the beginning. I have wood. We've made a fish shape. Now that you're all caught up, let's continue. First up, drilling eye holes. So I went fairly deep because I'm going to be making custom resin eyes for this. We'll get to that step later. Next up, I need to make a slot for a lip. I'm going to use this Dremel with this tip and just gently carve away at that. I'm going to do that off camera because I kind of need to be careful this wasn't part of the plan from the beginning. We'll be right back. I'll show you the results. Okay, that's about as deep and as wide as I can go with it. The next step is to make a lip and install it. And if you're worried about that big hole looking bad, once I install the lip, we're going to use two-part epoxy and we'll form it, sand it, shape it. It'll look good by the time we're done. Let's make a lip. I'm going to make this lip the size of a United States quarter. Just going to cut on the inside of that circle. I'm going to measure the width of this. Just put it down here. You'll see. Just going to get some two-part epoxy mixed up and put that lip in there. Okay, now I just wait five minutes for that to dry and I can set the angle I want as I go. We'll be back when it's done. Lip is installed. Next step is a clear coat for all the pieces. It's time to paint. As per usual, we're going to start with opaque white. I laid it on there pretty thick. I'm gonna do the next pieces. It's so satisfying to finally see it without all the marks all over it, you know? Like a clean slate, finally. Moving on. Something seems to be clogging my airbrush here. First color is going to be a purple to blue color shift. A little unorthodox to put that as a base coat, but it makes sense because in the picture I'm using as a reference for this, it's kind of purple and blue underneath, so I think this is going to do the trick. I'm going to kind of basically cover almost the whole thing in this, and then we'll add colors on top. Let's go. Layered it on pretty thick there, left the bottom white, not worried about the top, that's going to become a whole bunch of different colors. Let's get the back half. Alright, going to let those dry, and then we're going to move on to some other colors. Transparent orange. Wicked. I need a little bit down by the fins, where the fin meets the body, and a little spot of it back here near the end of the tail. And then a big old concentration of it down here at the front. If you can't tell already, this is going to be a bluegill. Be 
Be careful with your transparents. You have to layer them up. They get dark slowly. Uh, they're designed to do that. So it's easy to overpaint if you're trying to get it to go dark. Just take your time and keep layering, 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 and you'll get darker and darker with the transparent paints. And that's what they're designed to do. So you can slowly build that color up. Next up, some transparent bright green just along the top and uh, some of the fins. I clear coated my base color and if you've been watching my videos you know I like to put clear coats in between layers of paint it really gives a 3d effect that I think is just great now I'm just adding stripes to this I've already done it the other side I'm gonna continue over here I'm using wicked the halo green Then I'm just going to go across the top with the same color to blend that all in. I put a clear coat over the whole lure and now it's time to put some scales on it. This is window screen at a 45 degree angle and I'm using Wicked Pearl White. You're about to see I had a bit of a mishap when I was painting the scales. I oversprayed it in one spot. I have two options right now. Because I've clear coated under these, I could wipe them off and start over. Or I could use this as a Bob Ross moment and make that look like an injury on the fish, which I chose to do. I started by adding some bone white to it to add a little bit of fleshy detail. Then I moved on to red and black just to add in some detail to it. I think it turned out pretty good. I've done this before on lures, and it's one way of going when you have a little bit of a mistake like that. Let's move on. Gills, starting with transparent black. That was a mixture of Wicked Laguna Blue and Pearl Satin Gold. Okay, I've added some detail to the gill here. Looks pretty good in the light. And as you can see, I've colored in the eye. I used Wicked Aluminum and then just black. And the next step is to fill that in with some UV resin. I explained how to do this in a previous video. I'll probably put a link down in the description. Let's do it to this one. So this is simple, I'm just going to fill in that eye with the UV resin using the back of a paintbrush, this stuff. Then we hit it with a UV light. All dried up. Here it is with no UV resin, just the paint. And here it is with the UV resin just over that eyeball. Now they're both done. Those turned out great. We are getting there. The next step is to complete these door hinge joints. That's where this brass rod and this stainless steel wire come in. Let's get to it. For the fins, I'm just going to use a little bit of stainless steel wire. So I've already got that end bent and in there. Then I'm just going to bend this end and clip it off. That should hold that just fine, and it's free moving. The tail fin will also be a piece of the stainless steel wire. In the middle section, I'm using this piece of brass tube, which fits in there freely, and the lure operates freely too. So I'm just going to cut this to size and basically just glue in the top glue in the bottom and that should be done okay so I completed the bending here and snipped it off and that is absolutely what we wanted let's do the tail piece next
Okay, we'll just slide this rod on in. Set it flush with the top. And I'll mark where I need to make my cut. No problemo. For anybody interested, this is the type of pen I use to sign my lures. I recommend you let it dry for several hours before you put a clear coat on. I'm going to make the cut real quick. I'll be right back. Perfect. Now all I have to do is glue the top and the bottom, but not get any glue on the middle joint. I'm just going to use some UV resin to kind of just cap them off, and I think that should seal the holes too. I think we're done. It's always a weird point in the build when you finish. It's been a long, strange trip making this lure. I suppose the next step is to throw it in the water and see how it works. But that's for a future video. About to be going on a fishing trip, and I'm going to get some good footage, if I can, of all, a whole bunch of lures that I've made. So look out for that. Thanks for joining me for this one. Uh, I hope you're making things. It doesn't have to be fishing lures. Just make sure you're making stuff. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.